Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this particular part of the segment is the Maula chat where we learn from. Yeah, perfect. This, the, this, this particular part of the segment is called Imbaula chat. Imbaula, Neslungu, fireside chat. If I'm in a fireside chat, I go to fireside chat where we learn from a seasoned. Not even a seasoned, you know, I consider him a legend, you know, I learned so many things, you know, because he's one of the people that supported us for tea, with tea, years and years and years, with his time plowing back into the economy, but most importantly, you know, the invaluableness of everything you shared. So, one of the things, I think one of the most important things I learned, you probably touch on it, but I want to, spoiler alert, it's very like it. So, when, when Prajabu was sharing years ago and was telling the story of how from a legalistic, guys, can I get your attention? Please just speak low. The gentleman on my right, I don't want to point at you. So, but when he was sort of sharing his story, right, and he touched on when he had a bit of a bump, the brand was not affected because he had his legal stuff in the right way. The brand was owned by one organization. The operations were outsourced to another organization. And the actual sales were outsourced to another organization. When this had issues, it was just a mere sending an email to myself to cancel a deal with my own company, other company that I own to now reappoint another company. The product is still on the shelf. It doesn't leave. This one deals with its issues. You still move. Pearls of wisdom that you're going to learn from this gentleman, a legend. He's got a book out. Buy the book, buy the book online, buy the book on bookstores, you know, just have your notebooks out, your pens ready, tweet out and share. I'd like to now take this opportunity to bring up on stage Upra Chabu. Uh, please, you know, a round of applause. You can stand, you know, let's show him some love. You guys can do better than that. An entrepreneur extraordinaire who's built a natural hair brand at a time where it was unpopular. No, continue, continue. Let him feel the love. No, come. Let him feel the love because that's what we need to do. These are our role models. These are the guys who've literally built multi, multi-million rand organizations. And we'd like to thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for believing in us five years ago and for continuing, or seven years ago, for continuing the journey, and you are still back here today, Ekasi. Um, yo, you guys are gonna love this, yo. Yo. I'm a fan. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. Greetings, Sanbonan. Wow, it's such a pleasure to be in front of you. I feel very humbled and welcome. Thanks, Budelani. Thanks to the T, thanks to NetBank, you know, for organizing events like this. I remember years ago when Bulelani started. Wow. We are at that time. But here he is today. And, uh, you know, there was no sponsor then. You know, he would just put things together by himself. Thank you, NetBank, for believing in him. And uh, it helps us as well, you know. So, you know, to spread the word, especially the entrepreneurs. And uh, I would say thank to those who are exhibiting at the end there. I can see guys are doing well. That's where we all started, you know. I'm a products, and then you, you, know, you grow and put it on the shelves there. But don't stop marketing. Actually, um, you know, the previous speaker mentioned so many things of which I was standing at the back there listening. And Bulelani said as well a lot. But what I'll take you through, I'll just take you through a story. I always say it's a journey, you know. So they spoke about USP your unique selling point. Why should people um, buy your product? Why are you getting into that business? You know, those are the small things in the market. And remember, there will always be obstacles. There will always be people who don't believe in you. And but, please, keep going. Soldier on, don't stop. And your background as well. You know, I always say, how you grew up, how you were born, has got nothing to do with you. But what is important, the way forward. You know, how you approach 
the life and how you're learning from the lessons. You know, so it's very, very important. Don't curse your parents. Don't curse how you grew up. Forget about that. It's got nothing to do with you. Now, you know, I remember when I started this uh, product, you know, the guys would say to me, but Mr. Stone, why this? But I couldn't understand as well why I had to come up with a product that enhances natural hair because those years it was not fashionable. I remember, you know, it was about Pam, it was about relaxers. I don't know those who are in my age group. Are you there? Were you there during the days of Pam? Relaxers. Eskel. Yeah, not tap tapping. That's it. That's okay, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was not fashionable to have natural hair. You know, everybody wanted Eskel, relaxer, and the salons were more into Eskel and relaxer. I didn't blame them because. It was easy to do that, you know. But I refused because I always say, you can't suffer for beauty. My sisters cannot suffer for beauty. You know, you'll see when you shampoo the hair, you go to the basin, not because you go there running. I don't know whether you remember that. Because, yeah, she's a cunt. It's burning, you know. So, and after that, you find Gucci, the scalp is damaged, you know. So I refuse to be part of like the people who are making money out of that. So hence the issue of natural hair. You know, the pro I mean, it's popular known as dreadlocks, of which I refuse to call it dreadlocks. Because I always say dread, if you look at your dictionary, stands for dreadful, fearful, scary. So there's nothing dreadful about my hair. So it's a word that was given to us during the days of slavery in West Africa, when they saw the paifa. You know, in Senegal, there's a tribe paifa, they leave the hair to grow. Now, the slave master will say, your hair is fearful, is scary. Then they said, these are dreadlocks. These are hair locks, these are African locks. So, we must learn to change that as well. It's very negative. But, when I started that, people said, but why this? Until Sandile Memela, a journalist from City Press, then he said, hey, Chavas, what do you want you? I mean, I was born a street away from the father of player consciousness, Steve Biko. And then he said, now, you see the background, the influence you get from a background can change your mindset and start a business. I think that is why I started the natural products. You know, it was not easy. Like, my sisters at the back, like any of us here, it is not easy, the issue of the money. You know, because I was talking to my brother here from NetBank, I said, he did mention that we're not going to give you money until we believe that we are going to make money as well. It's true. You know, I tried. I approached all the banks. I think you remember the community bank, Joe Slovo's bank. That's, that's the only bank that I could open an account because I was listed, you know. So those are the challenges you go through. And then you knock all the doors, nobody listens. And the other thing, you don't have money to buy machinery. You have to contract package. I don't know whether you know when I talk about contract package, is to go to somebody who mixes lots of products and you ask the person, can I have a brand written X? You know, I'll bring my packaging. So we call that, it's a contract packaging. And they're very expensive, they're not cheap. Because I remember I used to, my first product, the molding cream, I would spend about 14 rand for the molding cream and I would sell it at 18 rand 90. You see, we're not making money, but I was building the brand. All I wanted, I wanted to put Jabu Stone there. You know, and it was tough. It was not easy. And the issue of um, celebrity endorsement, whereby Bulelani spoke about you go there and carry the bags and do something so to be seen. So what I've done, I approach people like Bujeri Ranseri, Sipohostix Mabusa, Abu Ray Piri, because those are the people who had locks. And the people didn't want the hairstyle, but I had to use celebrity endorsement. There was, we didn't have Facebook and all those things by then. So we used the celebrity endorsement. And uh, I remember my mother saying, so I said, no, mama, once 
I take care of their hair. They want to talk about the brand. But my, mama, my mother couldn't understand that. But to me, it was a marketing tool because I didn't have money to market. But the more they talk about the brand, the more they talk about Jabustone, to me, that's marketing, you know. So my mother couldn't understand it, you know. So that is the nature of business. It is not easy when you start. Now, manufacturing. You know, the idea was there to do this product. But I'm not, I mean, I studied electrical engineering. I'm not a chemist, you know. So I always say anybody can be a manufacturer here. You don't have to be a chemist to be a manufacturer. Anybody. If you want to be, you can do anything. Now, I had an idea. I approached Dr. Hansel, uh, it's a chemist, German chemist, and then I said to him, hey, Dr. Hansel, I need to do a product that can protect the hair against the ultraviolet rays of the sun. You see, I'm, I'm giving him a brief. Now, Dr. Hansel is making notes, protect against the ultraviolet, and then he writes sunscreen agent. Then I said, I need a product that can add moisture. You know, he goes emollients. So that's how I gave him a brief, and uh, he developed my first product. So you must understand what you're looking for, what the results. And it was, I mean, earlier on, it was mentioned that um, you should know what you're looking for, and you must understand that um, the market, you know, who, who's your market? Who must buy your product? So by then, Funny, I didn't behave locks myself, you know. I had a hairstyle like yours. <laughs> so can you imagine selling something that you don't have, you know, the, the, the look and feel. But I went there because I believed in, I need, just need to sell this. And the Rastafarians refused to use my product. Because they told me straight, they said, my brother, me, I'm pure. I'm pure Rasta. I don't use a white man thing. I said, my brother, I'm not white, man, you know. <laughs> so... You know, the, 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 it was a challenge, you know. You go this side, nobody believes in you. But you have to soldier on, you know. It's not easy. It is not easy. Now you see the challenges, but you don't stop. I spent 14 rand, I sell it for 18 rand. How much is that? And I sell six units a month when I started. How much are you making? But fortunately, I was still all by myself by then, you know. So you can manage, you know, so that's the right time to start. Then, now here is the product, I have it here. Now, where do I sell it? Who's going to buy the product? And the issue, the marketing, I don't have the marketing budget. That's where, because when I, a decision had to come that I must use my name and surname as a brand. My surname is Stone. You know, my father changed before I was born. Zalok was told originally. So I took the name and the surname and said, let me make this a brand. The reason for that was, when I get an interview from a newspaper, it was easier for, for them to say, we were talking to Jabu Stone, and the product on the other side is Jabu Stone. To me, it was a kind of marketing my product. Because I didn't have the money. But that worked, you know. Now, here is the product. I go around, I tell people, hey, I've got this product here, you know, and the question, where do we buy it? Who are you going to sell it to? And then you go to a shop, you know, there was a shop in Small Street called Curtains. You know, I went to Curtains, and I said, can I give you my product to sell? The first question is, who wants Chabu Stone? Why must I put this on my shelf? Because you must remember, his shelf is not that big to keep every product. He needs to make sure the product that's on the shelf is the product that sells. Now, how do I do that? Ketchens refuse to keep the product on the shelf. Now, what would you do? Come. What would you do? If the here is a product, okay, that was before the online and everything. You know, you had to go to the shop or in the boot of your car. You know, the only thing that I have to do, I have to come up with a strategy now. I sent my friends to Ketens to go and look for Jabustone product. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, Ketens is like, oh, now here's a demand for this product. Then I sent them back, and then I went there a few days later. 
I said, Ketan's going to give you six units. And then he said, okay, six. And then I said, except you, it's the worst corner, I'm going to do your food. And then they went there. They bought the old six units. And they went back again. And again. And I disappeared. I disappeared for a few months. I tell you, you know, when I saw Ketan's a month, I mean, after that period, he was not happy with me. He was, he was losing business. <laughs> you know when they say you fake it? That's exactly what I've done. And when I went to Ketan's, I asked him, can I have a gondola? Do you know what is a gondola? A gondola, you know, when you get into the store, you find the Oros or the Cremora in front. You know, that's a, you pay for that space. It's a gondola. And after that, you go to the shelf. So there was, then I said, give me a gondola. And then he gave me for free. And then it was easier for me to use a pooling strategy. I could tell people, when, where can we get them? And then I say, curtains. And then immediately, they were there to buy the product from curtains. So you have to use that. You have to create the, 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 the marketing strategy on your side. You know? So we're growing. The business is growing slowly. Curtains is giving me a gondola. Now, my biggest challenge, the salons. Remember those salons that I used to escale? Takes them 45 minutes. I teach them how to do locks. Two hours. Which one are you going to do? Easy one. Yeah? And I mean, I want you to do this one because it's my product, you know. But when I, you know, so I had now the other, I have to rent a chair. You remember LXA salons? I had to rent a chair at LXA salons. I just rented a chair. So whoever wants to have the service, I know that there by Alex, at least you'll get somebody there, you know. So those are the things. So you see, this is a journey, guys. That's why I want to give you a journey. So you understand that, you understand the value chain of your business because I am standing here as a pro, I'm not even manufacturing, just a marketer, but I need a salon, I need a manufacturer, I need an end user, I need a distribution network. You are in the, so you must understand all that value chain. If you don't understand it, you're gone. You must understand the value chain. Now, the salons, they amplify the usage of the product because you sit there for about an hour. Once you sit there for an, about an hour, a stylist convinces you about this is the product. This is, you know, so you need the salons. Then I had to get those, uh, I mean, with Alex to rent a chair. Now, you see, now that is covered. Now, celebrity endorsement, I've got Sipo Hostics, I've got Jerry Ranseri, I've got Ray Piri, they're out there, Zenani Mandela, they, all the guys, you know, they going out there talk about, yeah, we're using Jabu Stone. Now, the people, they can go to Ketans to buy the product. Now, they can go to Alex to have the service. Now, yeah, well, no, no, it's covered in a way. But, Dr. Hansel is still charging me how much? 14 rand. And I'm still selling it at 18 rand. Now with a little bit of the money that I'm making, what do I do? I took that money and then I looked for a chemist. Somebody who does, you know, who's trained as a chemist. And then I got the guy and then we bought machinery. We start mixing our own product. And it cost me four rand. Huh? Four rand. Now, remember when I go to the bank, they couldn't even look at me because I didn't have a market, you know. And, I, you know, there was no hope, you know, in my business. Now, now we're growing. You know, the people are coming from Pretoria to the salon. You know, others are coming from Cape Town. I remember one guy was in a train from Cape Town, Park Station, into LX, locks done, service, back to the train to Cape Town. I said, oh, oh, now it's working. You know, people like about Lawrence Dube, remember the Toyota Top 20? Took care of their hair, go there, and people will start commenting, oh, Lawrence hair. Then I said, wow, which means there is a difference they can see now, which means what I'm doing. Now I need to duplicate that. And more people must see that, you know. So you, you don't stop. You soldier on. Now I had to open. I remember then. Remember I spoke about the Rastafarians. I went to Yeovil. 
I opened a salon under Tando. Remember Tando? I think that's where we speak to the ancestors there, right? In Tando. Ah, Jaman, you know, man. Yeah, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so in Yeruville, I put the salon under, you know, the, the, uh, I mean, um, uh, under Tando. That's where my salon was. But I made it very, very neat and clean. You know, I remember, um, I would see these clients walking. You could see what they want. They've got relaxer, they've got everything. But what I'll do, I will make sure that they sit down. Hey, please sit down, they sit. And then from there, what can I offer you? You know, juice with snacks, coffee, biscuits, and everything. Please sit down. And then from there, while they're sitting relaxed, I said, how can I help you? No, I want to listen to I want to baba, I want to like, ooh, 20 bricks, cutting. I said, we don't do relaxer here. We just, we specialize in locks. I said, what? I said, this is the place for that one. Put it, please, man, can you... I said, no, no. Yanda paku kufi. Kufi had a saloon at the corner there. I couldn't go there. Babu yebat I man put. So you make sure that your saloon is clean. I think that made more people to change how they looked at that hairstyle as a negative, unholy, you know. So, by the way, I always say that, uh, I'm, I'm sure all of us will read the Bible here. I always say, this is the only hairstyle that is in the Bible. If you go to, to Numbers chapter 6, verse 5, it says it, no razor shall come closer to your head. I'm sorry, my brother. <laughs> no razor shall come closer to your head. You leave your hair to grow until they lock. It's in the Bible. You know, so this is the hairstyle for all of us, guys. Please uh, see the hands there. We need some customers here. <laughs> So, you know, those are the things that you have. You must make a research on your business. Understand, you know, like the research I've made about the BIFA in West Africa, the research about the BIFA. So those are the things you do so you can sell your brand properly. So we had a salon in Yeovil, and then we started opening up more salons around the country. I think there's a time where we had about 18 salons, you know, because the demand was growing, but they were corporate-owned. Now the challenge, here comes, remember the, the days of Discom? Discom store, right? not Discam, Discom. Yeah. Now Discom approached them in Cape Town and said, guys, I need you to list my product. The first thing they told me, they said, Jabo, we will list your product, but if you cannot deliver, you're going to pay us. Somebody spoke about service delivery. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, they said to me, if you don't deliver, because I won't only be disappointing them, I'll be disappointing their clients. They said to me, if you don't deliver, and they had about 200 stores by then. But fortunately, I had my own chemist who were mixing now in Rosettenville. So it was easier for me. And then I went there, and then I started listing my product discount. And then it started growing. You know, your jumbo started growing. Africa Cash and Carry, the wholesalers, you know, used the pooling strategy, you know. But you know what? There's another thing that you don't stop. Because remember, you sell your product in Katla Hong, like my sisters at the back there. But you need to go to the whole Gauteng. You know, you need to work on your distribution network. And then the other thing that I found from some of the business people you want to keep, you said, no, this is my formulation. I can't get somebody to... Listen here. Form formulation is formulation. You know, I mean, I can give you a formula for body lotion. Exactly what I do. I can give you exactly that spray. The formula for that. But the bottom line, are they going to buy it if it's written in You see, they, the same thing, but they're going to buy it because it's Jabu Stone, because I've marketed the brand for a long time. You see, so formulation, don't even look. Last week, I, I was at Innovation Hub, you know, um, the herbalist, you know, our traditional healers. They were like battling to take the product into the market. They're telling me, no, you see, these things from my great-grandfather, it came down, I can't give the formula, but how are you going to sell it? Because you're not going to sell it only one place. You have to let the formulation people, they can, they can duplicate, then you make money. So it is very important to think of the distribution network at the back there. How are you going to distribute your product? You understand? That product must, have, must be able to reach somebody in Kailicha, Mlazi, you understand? So it has to. Now, how are you going to do that? You know, so it's extremely important distribution network. You have to work on that one. One lady came to me the other day. 
showing me the product. Here's my product. And then I check the prices. The other thing is the pricing. We, badly, we, 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 we have to compete and compare. Who is your competitor? You know? Then if your competitor is Revlon, uh, a hairspray, have a look, the price and everything. Don't go too far off the, uh, you know, because if you triple the price, then you are out of the market. You know, so your pricing is extremely important, you know, and the distribution. This lady comes to me and said, hey, Bob Chavu, this is my person. Wow. And then she phones me a few weeks later. Now, Pick and Pay has called me. They want to list my products. So, wow, congratulations. But I said, please, ask the buyer to list your product only in Houghton. She agreed. She phoned me after the meeting. She said, hey, Bob Chabu, I'm listed in 75 stores. 75 stores, congratulations. Where? Zip. Uppington. Kabecha. Hmm? KZN. How is she going to... Guys, please. If you... Because this is manufacturing. My brother is doing sneakers there. I'm talking to you as well. You know, you have to start where you can reach the market. Because I started with Gauteng. The next thing, I don't have money for petrol, but I know it's Akane. My stock is there. Because what the... You, you, they take your stock, you know, we, we take the stock to the distribution center. Distribution center will take the stock to a store and the, to the storeroom. Somebody must take it out there and bring it to the shelf. If nobody does that, you, the buyer will say the product is not selling. And it's sitting right there. So if you can manage to go and take that product into the shelf, then people can see, then they can buy it. Then you get paid for that. So it's extremely important where do you start. She called me later. Bob Chabu, can you invest 200000 in my business? I said, no. I don't want to invest in your business. I have to invest in my business. The last time she called me asking for 2,000 rand to go to get a bus, catch a bus to go to Durban. That's painful to me. Do you understand now? It, it, it's not nice. Because those are the challenges we are putting ourselves into. This is dog eat dog business, guys. I must be honest with you. I used to send my product, Cavell would, because every, every Mondays, the grabs, you know, they talk about this the product is needed, people are looking for Jabu Stone in, in Blomfontein. That time I'm only in Gauteng. Cavell just went to dump the product there. So no, no, this can do what Jabu is doing. You know, so it didn't bother me. I just, concent you concentrate in the area where you can save this. That's all. Don't worry about the, oh, I was with no, no. Kala like at home. Get into Gauteng. Are we together, guys? You know, that's very, very serious. You know, it's very... So, that's a journey. Now, once you hit Gauteng, the whole country, all the provinces, you hit the provinces, you go Botswana, Lesotho, Swaziland, you know? You hit, and then, after that, there is something the government does, uh, they call it the outward mission. I don't know whether you're familiar with that. Whereby... South African businesses, they visit West Africa or East Africa. You must go to the export side, those who are doing manufacturing. But after you've done the state work here at home, and then you can go there, and then they will make you meet maybe um, your, 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 somebody who does the same thing with you, your shea butter, you know, coconut oil. So you create that relationship with other guys there. So it's very, very important, guys. You understand? And I'm sure after that we moved then to, I remember I had a trip to Ghana, Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, 1999. When I was there, you know the other thing is very important, the, 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 the way people look at the hairstyle. Because when I was in Ghana, people were anti-locks because the guys who had locks would steal money and go to the beach. You know, they were more thuggerish in Ghana. So I come now with the hairstyle, I'm saying this is, they say, young man, please don't waste our time. That's what they told me. Until I went to the U.S. to exhibit in America. Because I thought, I want to go out there. And then we had to exhibit in Brona Brothers show, in Atlanta, you know, Jacob Javits in New York. So we started exhibiting the product everywhere. Until I met a lady from Ghana now. And then this lady said to me, but Jabu, why are you not in Ghana? 
That was now 2004. And I was in Ghana 1999 when I was told I must not waste their time. But all I said to her, I said, please invite me. But when you invite me in Ghana, please make sure that the media knows that I'm coming so we can have all the media platform. Fortunately, she did that. Trust me, I went to Ghana. I was in all the news, radio. By the time I had to go back home on my way to the airport, I was already signing autographs on my way back. Because that marketing, it's very important, the marketing. You have to market your brand, and then you can't stop. You must keep talking about it all the time. Because if you stop marketing your brand, then it's going to die. Somebody was asking me now, Bob Chabu, we don't see you anymore. We don't see your product. It's costly. I do market, but it's, you spend more money in marketing than, you understand, but don't stop. Keep marketing your, your brand. And then if you can affiliate and associate with other people, do it. Because there's a time whereby I would, ask, uh, like, I would print t-shirts for most of the musicians, your Boom Shaka, those years, Kim, you know, Bongo Muffin, I'll print a Jabu, uh, uh, like their brand and put a Jabu stone on the side, you know. So you, you have to have that association with most of the brands that are there, you know. So it's extremely important. The US, we did, came back, but now Bulelani mentioned something earlier on whereby, you know, like any other business, right? It grows. It grows, right? Look at me now. You see, as you walk, you know, you're not aware that it's the end. Eh? In business, you keep working, right? You keep working, and then you think it's still happening. And by the time it does this, what happens to you? You're gone. That's what happens to business, guys. You think you're still holding on, Gandhi, it's gone. So that is why you need to revisit every Monday or every second week, every month. You have to revisit the performance of your business and uh, what you call it, the appraisal. How is the performance of your employees? Because they are going to steal from you. Bazo Shai Tulas. You understand? And Bazo Shaya, because Babo Nabatula Shile. And Makpelinya Bazo Fudimali, like where is salary. I don't know whether you've you experienced that. It happens, right? Those who run business, right? You know? So you have to. Those measures all the time, you know, you keep checking on that. We grew our business. Head offices in the U.S., in Manhattan, bees in Atlanta. You know, you know the business is growing. Now, while I'm that side, at the back here, they were stealing from me because, remember, Chabustone belonged to Chabustone. Now, nobody had shares on that. That is the biggest danger, ladies and gentlemen. Once you do that, it's good in the beginning. When you, but once your business starts to grow, then it's attracting. You know, it's very attractive. Other people, they come now. They want to steal from you. And if, if you're not aware, by the time you look back, and then you'll be gone. But fortunately, the brand A brand like this, Jabustone, I made sure that belongs to the family trust. And the trust had an agreement with Afrocentric design. Now the trust is me and other people, right? My family you know how trust work. And the trust create an agreement with Afrocentric design as the business trading as Jabustone. But that company doesn't own the brand. The brand is owned by the trust. Right? Now, like any business, it's crucial to pay you. So, like crucial to pay you. Business started to give me challenges. And now, I have to look at say, wow, Afrocentric design, you are not performing well. Who's Afrocentric design? It's still me, right? Now, Afrocentric design, we are not performing well. Now, we are going to take, the trust is going to take the brand and give to that company to continue manufacturing. Are you hearing me, guys? Are you hearing me? Now, where is the risk of the business? It's not there, right? 
The risk of the, is not there, but Afrocentric design is the one that is at risk. But the brand is not at risk because Afrocentric design doesn't own the brand. The brand is owned by the Jabustone Family Trust. And the Family Trust said, you, you know, we're taking our brand, we're giving it to this company. So when challenges were there, the product was still on the shelves. Do you understand, guys? So that's what Bulelani was talking about. That you must always know that challenges are going to come. And the people are going to come to you and want to buy shares, but I always say that if you own the company, at least take 30% and give to your employees. They are going to make sure that that 30% works. Now, it protects your 70%. Please, guys, I've been there. It's not nice to lose money. You lose it. They don't care. They're not worried about you because it's your business. But if you give a stake to your employees or to the people that you feel that they're going to add value, give the stake out, and they will protect that 30%. But in return, your 70% is covered. Now there's another thing we call it, what if you are sick? Because if you run it and then you're not feeling well one day, that 30% will keep moving. When you're in hospital or you're on holiday or something, but that 30%, they are worried about their 30%. They made 10 million, they are 3 million. Now they say 10 million is not enough for you to make 100 million. They are on 30 million for themselves. They're worried about themselves, not about you. But trust me, your 70% is still protected. Are we together? Thank you. So that is very, very important, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, because that is our downfall. And it's unfortunate that um, we're all the first ones in business. You know, you learn from your mistakes and, uh, you know, it's not nice. So that is why you have to be very cautious from the beginning. And um, I heard that uh, we spoke about being kind. You know, don't take for granted when you meet people, you become nasty to them, guys. Because that's your market. It doesn't matter if a person knows it, but it's your market. Pass and greet. Hi, ma'am. How are you? Pass the hi. How are you? Lola. You don't know that person. It's, it's, it's your market. You know, go to schools. Go to youth uh, events. Go there. Meet them. Give out something. You know? you know. And I remember one day I was like waiting for a meeting and I'm standing... I said, oh, let me grab some chips at McDonald's, you know, so I can sit. And I see this lady, then I jumped, like out of instinct, you know, jumped to help her. And I'm like, quiet, minding then. My priga, and Karin, ah, sorry, man, by the way, you know, my sister was looking for you. I said, what? I didn't know whether, you know, that's where, you can you imagine if I was ugly to her? Then the business is gone. And from the sister, and then started we talking more business to her. You understand? So that is very, very important. But ladies and gentlemen, this is my journey. I just want to engage with you because my journey and your journey is different fields, but that's what we need to discuss. That's what we need to talk about. Are we together? Brother, can I have engagement with the people we chatting with them, right? Can I have engaging with the guys and find out what are the challenges or just come. Any other thing? Let's talk. I'm here. All right. So what we're going to do is open it up um, to the floor. Hey. Only five. Only five. Otherwise, we're going to be here until five. Some of you were... <laughs> I'm Mr. Javiston Leia, because I choose to go to Busa. I'm going to go to Busa. I'm going to go to Busa. All right, we'll move it around. So we'll take, let's just take two here. Let's start here. I'll move it around. Quickly, let's get straight into it. Who, who are you? What's your question? Sanmonani, Kamalamu, Kosnatu Kumalu. I'm the founder of Ken Rose Learning Center. And my question to you, Baba Wuti, how do you handle the, the existence and how do you best handle a competition when competition arises? around you and in a nearby environment where you're operating, how best do you deal with it? Hola. Okay. Uh, 
Hi everyone, my name is Lebu Lyon, and thank you for your keynote, it was brilliant. The question that I'd like to ask you is, I know you come from a time before there were digital tools, you know, like your social media to market your business, but as somebody who has a business that has grown into this day and age, what would you tell entrepreneurs about using social media uh, to market their businesses? Is it important? Does it work? Can I answer the start with my shoban? Ziligas, call now. You see, when you run, what I do personally, remember I started with locks, hair locks. Now people are moving to Afro. Am I right? Moving to Afro praise. When you said, ah, uh, you know, my mother was using Jabu stone. Ah, uh, it's an old product. I can't use it. No, 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 no. You know, you have to be on your toes all the time. You must always know what are the trends in the market. Afro, I've got oils now. I'm sure one of the packs there, there's an oil that we've just developed, you know, because they say we need oil. So you have to be always on your toes. Your ear must be on the, on the ground all the time. What are the trends? What are the people looking for? So you are not left behind. Talk about coconut, shea butter, uh, no parabels, you know, all those things. Ah, you go, you go with them. You know, we're coming up with the black soap now. We're coming up with, we've got cannabis. It's a fashion now. People, they want cannabis, you know. So we've got a product for cannabis. So you must always be on your toes. Don't, otherwise, Zolimar and Don. Sisters, social media is very important. You reach, Ebona, Tina, we've got a, something whereby anything that is said about Jabu Stone, on social media, it's gonna come back and, and whether it's America or Gupi, but we will find. So it's extremely important because people, when they talk about you and uh, you market, and the social media is the most, it's not too expensive, you know, because the only thing is you must be there when all the time, you know, that's my understanding, right? Got a sign here where else be all the time. So social media, it's extremely important. I would say, keep going there, market your business, because you'll reach out even the whole continent, Europe and the US. Social media is very important. Any other question? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Sure. Yes, okay. Uh, thank you for very much, program director. In humble greetings, I still do the house. Uh, Bong Kosimtin is a managing director at Township Business Clinic. So my question is, what criteria will you use in supporting the A team that you want to work with in your organization? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Spotting the A team, like you, the people that would be right for your team, right? So I think, you know what, just go through some interviews, brother. Ask the person why he wants to work with you, you know, and also I'm sure you need investment. You want them to invest or you just want them to be your team and move forward? You want them to be on the team. Yeah, no, just find out if they, also the, the motive, are they in the same motive with you, whether to build the business or they're not. Because the questions card you find with Amachita, they just want to touch and go back to quickly. And you get lots of that, you understand? So you must be able to identify and take your time. Yeah, man. So the other thing is, if I'm going to come to you and say, hey man, I've got my sister is looking for a job. And it's wrong. You, you must say, my, when, the, when the person's, no, no, you know what? As much as the sister is coming, there's other four that are coming. So, Uzamug reduce the, the expectation, you understand? Because if you, if you allow, said, bring, and then Uzaza very sagaja go to know So, try to interview and check that a person. Make sure that you know everything about that person before you could work with that. Okay. Anyone? Other question? Yeah, bro. I'm Shadei, the owner of Luthi's Hair Care, and I wanted to find out, is it worth it going into retail as a hair care brand, or would you recommend independent sales, like online store, um, distribution network, and that type of thing? I, I, I would say retail, take your chances in retail, because online, not all of us, we're still into online, you understand? 
few. Let's be honest, right? You know, you still want to go to pick and pay. You still want to go to shop right and buy there. So the only thing that you must do with your brand, just within the area, but you must identify which area you want to consider. If it's Katahong, make sure the people around Katahong, they know that product. They know it and they are going to use it. Make sure you market it so heavy in Katahong. Then it will be a pooling strategy. And then when you go to retail, retail wants to know why must, because when you go to retail, they're going to say, we'll give you 10 stores. Because they want to see your product, whether it's going to move, you know. So you make sure that those 10 stores, it's within your area whereby people, they've got a knowledge about your product, okay? Uh, hello, Sabona uh, Puchabu. Mine is different. I just need a mentor. Just yeah? That mentor is you. Um, I need a mentor and that mentor is you. Uh, for a month, only one month, just mentoring me, I'm at the edge of putting this product on, on the shelves, which is the retail. I just need a mentor. If you can say yes, yeah. <laughs> then I <will> <laughs> That's on the hot tight spot, eh? <laughs> eh? What should I say? Yes. Uh, eh? Yes. Eh? Ah, but wait. Mara, unta nguti ngayenz, nguti ngayenz, uti. Okay, shop. What? what what's your brand? What are you selling? Just get a mic quickly. Let's just so so these are the these are the people gonna buy it as well. Come, what is it? Uh, Pitch it. Is, uh, colic for it's a colic it's a colic remedy for kids who are suffering from colic. Co? Colic remedy. Colic remedy. Ile. Colic. Oh, okay. All right. Uh huh. Yeah, okay. It's long. It's long. Yeah, but I'm afraid. Tina Sfundi So basically, yeah. it helps when the child is reckless. It's constipated, is not taking, it's not, it's losing appetite, and so forth and so forth. Okay, all right. I'm sure you've been through the, what the, the, the what, what you call it, the system where you go for SABS and yes, pharmaceutical and all that. You've done that already. The product it's uh, it's with SABS now for testing. I'm just waiting for the results. Wow! Well done. So the ones are showing a song and I get out. Wow! I will leave over to the T team. They will help you with Slang and Dwan. Okay, Dwan. Sure. Ita. Sanvaran. Um, from Isimbogoto again. My is. Yeah, um, I'm a 100% shareholder on my company. Yo. I'm the founder and the managing director. So, we oh. expand and partner with other people. So, what is the biggest question you ask a person who wants to partner with you and making sure and what are the tips that you can give for me to give those people my shares? Because now I'm in partnership with a lot of people which I'm not sure of, the relationship I'm not sure about. But now I need the best question to ask them. Besides, what are you going to do with working with me? The other question, which can help me be able to nominate or choose that person. Okay. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, we, we always hear people, they start a business together. And Tana Skal is about 50 50. Are you familiar with that? I need 50 50. One, fifty-fifty, I can see. Uh, nah. Let me put it this way. I want to go this to my left. I'm fifty percent, eh? and I can see towards the left there's a market. I'm gonna make it, right? Fifty percent, and my partner wants to go to the right, and he sees the same. What do we do? There is never, you know, no equal decision. Because we are going to fight immediately. 50-50 doesn't work, guys. Please, cut. 50-50 doesn't work in a business. At least start at number 
Where one also was with Magu for Uta Uta Amara. Yes. 50.1, 50 feet doesn't work. You know, because there's never any quality decision. Now, on that note, whatever you bring on board, you must uh, kind of, depending the performance yak, you said now, here are the shares for you. But these shares are only active provided you do this. You understand? So, perform. Now, as I wonder this performance, and then you kind of, uh, you know, monitor that performance. You are growing it. When you started. So, you, yeah, yes. So, you might, because it's your baby. So, you're going to bring this person in here. And then, uh, boom. And then, when I want to build want to build this. So in the show, she must understand that you want to build this business and let it grow. You are the leader. Don't, don't underestimate your leadership because I always say that somebody brings money, another one brings the skill, and then says, shy 50 50. It doesn't work like that. So rather, whoever has got an idea of the business, take leadership. It could be 51%, 50.1%, but the, somebody must lead. Are we together? My brother. Just gonna take a, a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. Just stay around, stay. No, I'm saying. Yeah. All right. So your hands are still going up. If we continue, we won't finish, uh, and we still need to announce the winner, and uh, we still need to respect your time. So Mr. Jabu Stone has agreed that he's not leaving. He's still here. After we announce the pitch winners after we do the final arrangements, etc., he'll still be here, so you can still come and ask your questions directly to him. We'll take the last one there, my brother. We're announcing the pitch winners, and then we're wrapping it up. Thank you. Uh, my question is regarding uh, the barriers that, 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 that hinder us from joining into the industry. Like, for me, I'm in the, I'm in the mm -hmm. mode. Ne? Uh, I registered my company 2016, and then it's been going, going, going. But now there's a, like a lot of barriers. Like you get up, or you need to. Get, you need, if let's say you need to do work with insurance companies, you need to be RMI certified. Uh, for you to be RMI certified, you need to have certain tools. And being in the motor industry, it lift a one on its own. I saw now they were going for 34, but uh, I was talking to National Workshop Equipment. One lift now is going for like 50k. You understand those type of barriers, uh, like our regulations and things that keep us from being able to grow uh, and and be quick and make money. How do you break into those barriers? Like, for instance, John Abusho now, they didn't want to give you a shelf. So how do you navigate around those barriers that that hinder us from growing? Yeah, <clears throat> I think my brother, you are in the motor industry, right? But I think because you, you need to raise that money, because you won't get it from the bank, because they need to see it's a working business, they, they, they can benefit from that business, all right? Now, I would say, if there's something that could assist you to raise that money, whether as my, even if it's not your motor industry, but something else on the side, but you know where you're going. Or you partner with somebody that is already having the equipment. And then you pay every time to, but you know that if you charge me 30,000 and then that guy wants 20 and then you've got 10 from me, it's okay. But you must be able to, you know, to make small profit as well. So you remember I spoke about Dr. Hansel. I was spending a lot of money, 14 rand. But when I started accumulating some money, from 14 rand dropped to 4 rand. So now I was more into business. But I was stuck with Dr. Hansel because I needed to supply the people with the product. So I would say at least just navigate around. Make a research and find out other people that are in the same industry. If not, what other things that you can do to allow... Then you can raise some money because... Oh, the other thing that I was thinking here that we are not doing. I, I work with some guys, these, these Africaner guys here. 
they are into crowdfunding. And we don't do it because we don't trust each other. Now, can you imagine if here, la, la, see, la, skip them a hundred rand, you understand? So, we can work on crowd. So, those are the things that we need to work on as Abandaba Miyam. It's tough, but for it, it's not easy. But you must come with means. But at the same time, so that's where we need to identify and we need to identify we need to identify your pastor, your nurse, your teacher, within the community, work with them. So this is what we see, assist each other to fund projects like those. Then by the time we get to business, then we are to land in that bank. In that bank, you oh man, you know what, oh, let's see your balance sheet. That's what they, they, let's see how you've been doing. And then they can see, look, you've been growing your business. Then that's where they're going to give you money. But most of us are managing only next. Then they will look at you, hey, man, we are high risk. You understand? So I think, Tid, you have to start looking at those things. Eh? All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Can we get a photo of you, Mr. Stone? Oh, sure. Okay. Just put the mic. Hello. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Mr. Jabu Stone. Thank you. Thank you. We also have. Uh, oh, Mr. Stone. Okay. Oh. We need to give you your 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 gift. Give you your flowers while you're still alive. Where are the flowers? Do we have flowers? Do we give him his own book and products? <laughs> no, he gave us. I get nothing this year. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We, uh, thank you so much for for um, for believing in the vision. I think we probably need to have another session where he needs to come again because there were just so many questions. Um, people learned so much from your presentation, but we, we really appreciate it Thanks. and wish you all the best. Thanks. Never knew you had an office, so you're a dollar. Mr. Stone. Young <laughs> <laughs> it's very inspiring. Once again, another round of applause for Mr. Jabu Stone. Thank you, sir.